Yo, it has been a while. What's up? This is part 2 of creating my tram conductor horror game. Apparently I've been using a term wrong. I mean, it sounds cooler than tram driver, but okay. In the previous part, we made the tram basics, talking NPCs, and made beautiful shaders for that horror aesthetic. So let's get right in. Let's make it beautiful, but not too beautiful, because otherwise it wouldn't be scary at all. To be honest, the environment looks a bit simple. It's basically just a couple cubes mashed together, especially the house, but let's not talk about that one. But before doing any of that, I don't want to forget about the main thing that makes a horror game a horror game. Being scared. I don't want to add a real jump scare just yet, so I created something that I call the warning scare. Simply look at an object of interest is not scary enough, so I added a little bit of FOV zooming and of course, a sound as well. Just like with a real jump scare, it'll be very important to not overuse it. Something that has been bothering me for a while is the tram audio. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, which is probably the biggest reasons why these videos take so long to make, but it's purely for testing, but it's time to actually find some good sounds online. So I did that, but it was actually very hard to find some useful tram sounds. But by doing some EQ magic and also using some noise reduction, it's actually pretty good. Of course, I already found loads of random bugs that I made in the previous version. Especially this one, uh, oh my God. but I also found a very hard one to fix, well I thought at least. For the distortion effect, I use Unity's lens distortion, but I also use raycasts to interact with the tram controls. Because of all the distortion, the positions of the buttons are not in line with what the player sees, which makes complete sense to be honest, but it's a bit of a problem. Luckily, one Google search basically solved the whole problem. I just copy pasted it, yoink. Look at that yoinking! Something I always wanted to add from the start was a radio. I wanted the player to chill to some beautiful music, like Mozart, Kanye West or music without copyright problems. I mean, to be honest, I don't, I don't want to be sued. So instead of Baby No Money, we got Luxo with Cash, and instead of Juiced, we got Juiced but spelled differently. Of course, I don't want the radio to blast at full volumes at all times, or be too quiet, because the tram is so loud. So I quickly made a volume slider. Visuals are kinda bad, as I said a million times before, but it's true. The shaders make models look 10 times better, but 10 times 0 is still 0. So let's change that. For a game and a team of this size, which is basically just me, I will not be making all the models for the game by myself. And yeah, yeah, before commenting something like, asset flip bad, I'm not gonna buy, or like, hello Luxo, I am 3D artist, I want to work with you. You'd actually be surprised to know how many developers actually use pre-made assets, especially in the AAA industry, they're just better at hiding it. First, I made a small block out of the tram, because I wanted to check if the dimensions would work well. I found a beautiful old tram model and I transformed it in something like this. All the colors are always very simple, but by combining it with a bit of roughness and all the shaders we made before, it looks fine, it looks pretty good. The textures with the shaders are not too much, they give off the correct vibe and they have some cool detail, so it's actually pretty good. But to be fair, the art changed a lot from the rough materials that once were just <laughs> one leaf texture, so I had to tweak the shader a bit to make it fit a new style. Much better. Let's add some controls as well. I took some inspiration from other models and pictures and ended up creating these little thingies. I tested it in a game with the beautiful leaf texture, gave it some better textures later on and it looks quite nice. Whenever a tram moves, other things move as well. So I tried to add a sway to the handles of the tram to make it a bit more dynamic and um, yeah, yeah okay, cool. Just to get something done, to make me feel like I didn't waste a day, I added a beautiful backlight. Sure. It, it looks beautiful, I guess. Anyways, a little bit ago before the tram model was even a thing, I was thinking about the dashboard and how we can know what's going on behind us. So I started creating a way for the player to look around while controlling the tram and uh, we had some interesting results. Very interesting. So I left it like that, <laughs> couldn't be bothered, but now we're back at it again. It's still a bit rough around the edges, but it works like it should. For now, I'm just holding the R key. Oh wait, yeah, yeah uh, I also added the door animations when pressing this big scary button. But don't press the wrong one because, uh... You know what's very scary in video games? Monsters, yeah. Sure. 
Darkness, true. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty scary. Disappointing people, relatable. How about social interaction? That's pretty scary. Anyways, let's make NPCs. I always find it funny when NPCs are as lifeless as possible, so I want to try something like that as well. <laughs> oh my god. That's pretty scary, but not for the right reasons. Anyways, I got distracted and made a flashlight, because we'll need those either way. I made a very basic model to test it really quickly with the volumetric lighting thing. It looks great. So I quickly made the textures, however, it's very dark and it may be very hard to see, so that's a bit of a problem. Then I fixed the NPCs a bit. They can also move now, uh, not necessarily like that. Okay, no, uh, let's give it some real walking animations. Perfect. After some time, both the man and the woman are done. These are not the finished models, as I still need to make dozens of variations of course, but these are just the basic NPCs. I still think the man's mouth sometimes looks like a mustache, but the lips are just very crooked for some reason. They're both walking in place, so I quickly made it so they just stand there, like normal people, possibly judging you for constantly blinding them with a flashlight. Now that the NPCs are done, let's go right back to the jump scare. At the beginning of this video, I already created a little warning. This is mostly to warn players, I mean, that's why I called it that. So let's make it a bit more deadly. First of all, I really like it when video games make the player fall, instead of just getting jump scared and shoving a game over screen in their face. So I made the player fall on the ground, which looks pretty funny, and then I shoved the game over screen in their face. Currently, I am using a simple FOV zoom. To make it a bit more interesting, I finally added camera shake. Combining these with a pretty scary sound, which is mostly just loud, we now have a simple death jump scare. I also tried experimenting a bit with knockback, this may be a bit too much, but a little bit of knockback can make it a little bit more dramatic. To end this video, I want to fix something that I've talked about earlier, and I want to try a small fix before ending the video. When making the flashlight, I put it on the ground in the grass. I literally tried to find it for more than 10 minutes and I couldn't find it at all. I would need a flashlight to find a flashlight and how does that make any sense? At the end, I figured out it simply just rolled away because I was using a capsule collider. So I added a simple ring of light around the flashlight, like a neon band or something, to make it a bit more easy to find in the grass, or anywhere else. I don't really know what to think of it, it looks a bit forced, a bit out of place. If you have a better idea to make it a bit more visible, let me know in the comments. And uh, oh yeah. We can even go as far as just making it a button, so that the player always has one. Anyways, this is it for this video. It's coming together pretty well, but a lot of glue is needed to put all the different pieces together. In the next one there may be coming a Steam page, who knows. So if you want to look out for that, it would be very cool to follow me on all these beautiful platforms. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.